Hey guys, what is up? John here from FlyMyCalf.com. Today we're going to be talking about finding out what the crosswind limitation is of your aircraft and how to do that. So we're going to be making an approach here to runway 19. Really the wind's coming right down the pipe, but even if there was a crosswind, we're going to show you how to account for this and really how to figure out what the max crosswind limitation is on your airplane. We're going to go ahead and make this approach here at 70 miles per hour indicated and kind of check that with our ground speed to make sure that's what we're really getting. All right, final is clear. Don't see anybody else out here. We're going to get established on a nice long final, just as you would if you had a crosswind landing that you had to deal with. You get established on a nice long final and you get that nose pointing straight down the runway nice and early. Put that side slip condition in there. Yeah, Lincoln Park traffic, Red Bearhawk. Final runway 19, Lincoln Park. All right, so we're going to be coming in at 70 miles per hour indicated. I'm going to fly over runway 19. I'm going to find out what my runway heading is here as I turn on to final. So as I get my nose perfectly aligned with the runway, I'm going to see what my runway heading is. My runway heading is, oh, about 188. So we're directly over the runway. I'm going to go ahead and put us into a slip. And I can see 210. I'm over the runway. I'm going to try it again here. 70 miles per hour. 165, still over the runway. We're going to go ahead and go around. So I know this looks pretty weird here, but what we're overall trying to do is use full rudder deflection left and right to move the nose left and right, see how many degrees left and right it'll move while using the stick to maintain lateral control of the aircraft, keep the airplane tracking straight down the runway so we're not drifting left and right. The purpose of this is to see how effective that rudder is against a crosswind. How many degrees can you account for? And when you factor in this chart here from the FAA, you can see they give you a reference guide here saying, hey, if you're indicating 70 miles per hour and you're able to swing your nose 20 degrees left or right of center line, or in this case, averaging it, right? So we had 210 degrees to 165 degrees. We'll average it. We'll call it a 20 degree swing roughly using full rudder deflection while still maintaining a straight direction with the aircraft going straight down the runway. Well, we reference this chart here and we can say oh, about 24 miles per hour is probably the maximum demonstrated crosswind component. Now, this in no way, shape, or form means that you can land your airplane in 24 miles per hour of crosswind, direct crosswind component. Doesn't mean the aircraft's even capable of it, but it's a really great starting point for an aircraft that's been heavily modified from its original state and the POH is no longer valid, or perhaps... It's a home-built aircraft, and there's really no data out there for it. Maybe the data's been lost. It's too old to ever had that data in the first place. So this is a great chart to start with. And then, of course, do this with your CFI on board. Have them show you the right way to do it. And go out and practice in someone with your CFI and really find out what your limitation is, as well as the aircraft's limitation. Now, I can confirm for you, after being in some pretty good stiff crosswinds in this airplane, that, you know, assuming we were doing 65 to 70 miles per hour indicated here, that would reference us some Somewhere between that 21 and 24 mile per hour max crosswind component according to this chart well i'd say that's pretty darn accurate you know 20 knot crosswind is what i came up with in my head as the limit of the max demonstrated crosswind for this airplane for this specific build and again this is a home built airplane so they're not all created equally you should you know build it according to a certain set of plans and the rudder should have the same direction travel every bearhawk patrol should be similar but it may be slightly different you may find some of them have a more effective rudder slightly bigger more travel whatever it might be so for us i can say yeah about 20 knots about you know in that 21 to 24 mile per hour range is the max demonstrate crosswind and you really don't want to be going much more than that that's pretty gnarly could you practice that also up higher in altitude following some kind of road or a power line something that's straight well, the problem with doing it up higher is you're not going to know if you're drifting left or right. So that's the part. You know, we'd like to do it at 1,000 feet, but we need to do it at an altitude low enough that we can see if we are, in fact, slipping left or right. Because you can make the nose, sure, you can make the nose 90 degrees, but you're not going to be able to hold the true bearing of the aircraft. We're Lincoln Park traffic, Red Bearhawk, left base, runway 19, Lincoln Park. Final is clear. Now, while that day I was using the runway to make sure I wasn't drifting left and right and get that really accurate information, if you have a GPS that can give you your bearing over the ground, you can do this up high at a safer altitude. As long as you are tracking straight, it's a lot easier to do so over a runway down low, but also much, much, much more dangerous. And that's why you really need to be doing this with a CFI on board that's familiar with the procedure if you are trying to figure out what the crosswind component is of your aircraft. But if you have a GPS that can simply display the ground track in degrees, then you could potentially do this up high, maintain the same ground track while swinging your nose left and right 
full deflection on the rudder and using the ailerons to maintain the ground track on your GPS at a nice safe altitude and get that idea of how many degrees left and right you can swing the nose given the authority of the rudder. Now, if this concept still doesn't seem clear or you want to look into it a little bit more, then go ahead and check out the Alaskan Off-Airport Operations Guide from the FAA Safety Team. That is where all this information comes from. And really helpful guide. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is just a gauge to get a rough idea of what the crosswind component is on your airplane. I found it on multiple airplanes to be highly accurate, but again, results may vary. So try it with a CFI, try it with somebody who knows, and who knows, maybe it'll help you out, especially if you have one of those airplanes that doesn't have good POH data, doesn't have anything accurate in there as to what the demonstrated crosswind component would be for that aircraft. And of course, if you have questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. Check out the website, flightmikealpha.com. This and lots more awesome videos online in our private instrument commercial pilot ground school and lots more coming in the off airport mountain flying course coming in 2020 at flightmikealpha.com. If you guys can't fly every day, then you know what to do. Flightmikealpha.com. We'll see you all in the next one.